Welcome to the Agile Bubble Map. In this series, we'll be going through a lot about Agile and 50 different definitions to jog your memory for your professional exam. Why Agile? First and foremost, remember, it's not the strongest of the species that has ever survived. It's those that are most adaptable to change. So what does it take to be adaptable to change? It takes the mindset. Having the great mindset of adaptability is what makes one agile. Agility is not about frameworks and methods. Primarily, agile and adaptability is about a mindset. So the mindset is encapsulated in the Agile Manifesto values and principles. And the values simply state individuals and interactions are valued over processes and tools. Work in product is valued over comprehensive documentation. Customer collaboration should be valued over contract negotiation and responding to change over following a plan. It makes sense when you think about it. All of these things are pretty good common sense approaches to any project, even in the world of predictive. The Agile Manifesto can be summed up in these sub-statements that I have developed. Be obsessed with the customer. Welcome change even late. Deliver working product frequently so that you can get great feedback to move forward. Business people and developers should collaborate daily because it's a short time frame for the sprint. You might as well. Build projects around a motivated team. Who wants a demotivated team? The most efficient way of communicating is face-to-face -face conversation. It's been proven time and time again. Professor Emeritus Albert Morabian is one of those who's proven it. Number seven, work in product is a primary measure of progress. No one cares about percent complete if the product isn't finally totally done. Number eight, agile processes promote sustainable development. The sponsors, developers, and users should be able to maintain a constant realistic pace. Continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility because it saves a whole lot of cleaning. Simplicity, the art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. The best architectures, requirements and designs emerge from teams that have been given that team autonomy and are self-organized. At regular intervals, tune and adjust. You see, these are mindsets and that is the Agile Manifesto Principles. Moving on, a clear illustration of how Agile could look. In adaptive project management, we could have a very base plan at the beginning that does not go so many sprints or iterations ahead. We carry out what we've planned and then we adjust. We carry out more and we adjust each iteration until we get to our goal. For that reason, you may find some teams in the world of Agile not finishing every single piece of scope in the backlog. They may actually arrive at the destination sooner than they imagined. So when you think about Agile, think about an adaptive journey. Think about a journey in which you could begin with a product vision in mind, and that is crystallized in an Agile project charter. The next step would be to create some sort of roadmap showing how you would move from the current state to the ultimate future state. The next thing you could do is plan releases and put together a team charter. At this point, the team can begin working on backlog preparation along with stakeholders or perhaps there is already some form of beginning backlog. Then we go into iteration planning. The team begins to work. They have daily stand-up meetings. We call them daily scrums. There could be backlog refinement in the middle of the sprint. And at the end of the sprint, they achieve a potentially shippable increment. That goes on to step 11, which we could call a demo. But really, the demo is a review of whatever has been developed. At the end of the review, some stories may be collected that were new, never seen before. There's feedback, 
and the team understands if they're on the right track. The final thing that happens in the sprint is a retrospective. At the end of the retrospective, the question should be, has all the value been delivered or is there more? If all value has not been delivered, then we will return to iteration planning and begin again. If we have delivered everything, then that's the final release and the closeout and the customer has got their final release. Remember, all these steps from 7 to 12 are pretty much in an iteration. Now, as you prepare for your exam, it's not enough to know what I've shown on the screen. There's a lot more that goes into the world of Agile. And that is what I'll be showing you today. Let's take a look at what I call the bubble diagram for Agile. It starts off with similar content to what I just showed you in a sprint. And by now, you probably know that a sprint has got artifacts in it, like a product backlog. There's an event called sprint planning where we decide what we're going to do in the sprint. That gets put into the sprint backlog and there's the daily scrum and backlog refinement. And there's an increment produced and like I said, a sprint review or demo, we call it. And at the end of that, there's feedback that we get. We understand more about the customer's view to what we have done. And the final thing in the sprint is the sprint retrospective. But that's just strictly talking about the sprint. There's a lot more that we could look at in the world of Agile. And in the world of Agile, we could look at more events. Some of the events that we could blow out here are backlog preparation, which does not typically appear on the map in Scrum that a lot of folks know. Backlog preparation is the activity of preparing the backlog where the stakeholders, the customer, the product owner, and maybe even some team members could be involved in that whole thing. There's also the concept of release planning, and this just means planning releases. For every release, there's a number of sprints, and a number of sprints generate a number of increments. So every sprint has got a number of increments. Release planning addresses that. There's also story writing. When we write stories, we write them in the form of role, goal, and benefit. Now, not every agile project or endeavor needs to have the request written as a story with role, goal, benefit. That's just a benchmark. So keep that in mind. When we talk about iteration planning, remember, it's actually called sprint planning in Scrum, but in general agile, we'll just call it planning the iteration or iteration planning. Something else you need to be aware of is the iteration itself starts the moment you get into the time box. The first thing that happens is the iteration planning. In the case of Scrum, the sprint planning. Also remember that the daily Scrum is referred to as a daily standup in general agile. And remember that when we say sprint review, it's also called demo. Now, in addition to the events that you know, from the world of Scrum, there is an event known as a Scrum of Scrums. A Scrum of Scrums is also known as a Meta Scrum, and it's a technique used when two or more Scrum teams, consisting of three to nine members each, need to coordinate their work instead of one large Scrum team. A representative from each team attends a meeting with the other team representatives, potentially daily, but typically two to three times a week. The daily meeting is conducted similar to the daily stand-up in Scrum, where the representative reports completed work, the next set of work, any current impediments, and potential upcoming impediments that might block the other teams. The goal is to ensure that the teams are coordinating work and removing impediments to optimize the efficiency of all the teams. Large projects with several teams may result in conducting scrum of scrum of scrums, and so on and so forth. It follows the same pattern with the scrum of scrums. So keep that in mind. You could find this on your professional exams referred to as a meta scrum as well. Now moving beyond the events, the next bubble here is artifacts. It's important that you remember there's certain artifacts that are outside of the regular 
configuration in Scrum where we have the product backlog, the sprint backlog, and the increment. If you take a look here, you'll notice that the events are pink. You'll notice that the backlog items that are artifacts, product backlog, sprint backlog are orange, and the increment is also orange. So keep that in mind. Moving into the artifacts though, beyond the orange artifacts in the sprint, we also talk about the vision. It is important you understand that a vision needs to be cast for the team to know why they're doing what they're doing. There's also the concept of an Agile project charter talked about on page 49 of the Agile Practice Guide. And there's the concept of a product roadmap, which I've spoken about quite a few times on this channel. The product roadmap, look at this as a macro map showing you the sequence of events from the current to the future state, showing you when releases might happen, when marketing efforts might be engaged, when partners might be called in, and when the entire spectrum of tasks and macro level activities unfold. That's why it's called a roadmap. It shows you the way to the future state. In addition to this, you might realize that I've arranged this in a sort of timeline. So as you move from left to right, you're seeing a progression of time through these artifacts. In the sequence, the next artifacts you might think about beyond the roadmap and the vision and the charter are the release plan. So you need to plan releases. Releases have iterations in them. So at the highest level, we have release plans lower than that, iteration plans, plan for each iteration. And in each iteration, what do you have? You've got user stories, work that you're gonna be doing. So in sprint planning, this is where we address what we're gonna be doing in each sprint. As I said in the very beginning, iteration plans are really the same as sprint plans. We say iteration planning, it's general. We say sprint planning, you're talking about in Scrum. In addition to this, we also have epics, huge chunks of functionality, features, clusters of user stories that make sense to bunch them as such for release. We have user stories written in the form of role goal benefit. Again, it's optional to be in this form. We also have tasks and tasks are lower level than stories. But watch this, tasks do not have value to the customer. The things that have value to the customer are higher level, such as stories, features, and epics. Those provide customer value, but tasks are just a vehicle to get the value. And that's why we don't fuss a whole lot about tasks in the world of Agile. There we have stories again, and then we have the definition of done and the definition of ready. Remember the definition of done pertains to the increment. The definition of done are the things that must be done before we can deem that increment totally finished at the end of that iteration, such as it should be peer reviewed if there's code, it should be tested, black box tested, unit tested, so on and so forth. Documentation must be complete. That is what the definition of done could be. Now the definition of ready is different. For the definition of ready, it could be things that conform more to what we call the INVEST acronym. Independent, negotiable, valuable, estimable, small enough to fit within a sprint, and testable. So keep that in mind. We'll talk about that again as we proceed down below to the next bubble. But for now, moving on, we have the concept of a product increment. Remember, this increment could be called a number of things. Now let's open Pandora's box because we could call it potentially shippable increment. We could call it increment. We could call it the increment. We could call it product increment. Now on top of this, there's a layer of other terminology that I would like you to investigate before you exam. There's the topic of MVP, minimum viable product. And the minimum viable product is the minimum amount of product that we should deliver or present to the customer to get an understanding and confirmation, feedback, to understand if we are on the right path, 
to know if this would fly in the marketplace. That's what MVP is about. There's also the minimum business increment. There's also MMP, but that would be minimum marketable product. There's so many other terminologies you could hear, but generally, if you're taking one of PMI exams, what you are likely to hear is increment or potentially shippable increment. Moving beyond this, my friends, we have the concept of the storyboard, which is really just code for a Kanban board. And you know, Kanban boards are broken down in the form of to do, doing and done. Great ways for the team to organize their work. Great ways for the team to see their work. You could say it's a form of an information radiator. Moving on, we have some other artifacts. Release burn down charts. And the release burn down charts just show you the burn down of features in a release. We have burn down charts themselves, which show us the accomplishment of work. In the burn down chart, it shows you the work that is left to be done. The burn up chart shows you the work that has been done. We have feature charts, which show us the burn down or burn up of features as they are being done. We have impediment logs, impediment logs are not as common as other artifacts, but some scrum masters keep a log of impediments. It would make sense to do that. We have product backlog burn up charts, and this shows us how the product backlog items are being accomplished. And we have the information radiator. This is just a visual display of information in this world. Moving to our final bubble here, my friends. Now let's move into the techniques. Under techniques, you have certain techniques that are quite popular in Agile space. When you are estimating in an Agile world, we don't estimate the way we do in predictive. We use the concept of story points. And to understand story points, we use silent relative sizing. We could use the concept of planning poker. We could use the concept of t-shirt sizing, animal sizing, and things such as that. Now, beyond sizing for stories, I also want to say that very recently in the Agile community, there's been a little bit of angst about story points. So not everyone is a fan of story points. Where they make sense to be used, use them. Where the team is up in arms about it, probably not good to push the team to do them because there are other ways of doing planning and estimating. Moving on, we have the concept of road mapping, which we've talked about a little bit. We have the concept of story mapping, and this is a different technique that is used in the world of Agile. Story mapping can be best described as a visual practice for organizing work into a useful model to help understand the sets of high value features to be created over time. This is where we could identify omissions in the backlog and effectively plan releases that deliver value to users. One of the hallmarks of the story map when it is well done is the layers and the layers just represent releases, but the higher levels of layers show you functionalities in the form of actions that need to be carried out. So if that action needs to be carried out, there's certain functionality that has to be built and those are lower levels. So the actions are the higher levels or the task that the individual needs to carry out. The lower levels are going to be the functions or the features that need to be built. And we group those by release. Next, we have the concept of planning poker, which I've mentioned Planning poker, great estimating technique, especially when you have time to do it. Silent relative sizing is a lot quicker. We have the concept of personas. Personas are used to understand who exactly we are building what we are building for. It's an archetype user representing a set of similar end users described with their goals, motivations, and representative personal characteristics. Here we have given when then, 
and the given when then approach is used when we are developing acceptance criteria for user stories. We also have the concept of the three C's, the card, the conversation, and the confirmation. We also have sustainable pace as a technique, a concept that you should be aware of, which is documented in the Agile Manifesto. We have the concept of facilitation, which is what the Scrum Master does sometimes, not all the time, because other team members could facilitate. We have the concept of pair programming, pairing developers together to work. We have the concept of mobbing, the concept of mobbing where everyone puts their brain power together and we have one person driving at a keyboard or swarming where everyone is on their own keyboard and swarming the issue, whatever needs to be done. We also have these concepts called continuous integration, which is continuously integrating a previous release with a new release or previous iteration with a new iteration, the concept of continually deploying value, the concept of refactoring, which is correcting code that may have been written, and the concept of collective code ownership. Now, all of these are generally wrapped around roles, and the roles in question that we're most familiar with are the product owner, the scrum master, and the developers. And those are the roles that we talk about in the world of Agile. So for the past number of minutes, my friends, we've been talking about the sprint, events, artifacts, and techniques to better help your understanding of Agile. If there were any of these concepts or terms that you feel you didn't get, you didn't understand very well, I would recommend that you go back to whatever guide you're using and go through those. I would also advise that you go through the data flow for Agile that I showed earlier on in this video. Remember though, if you're getting ready for a professional exam like the PMP, the CAPM, your week in Agile, you need to go on down to our website. Go on down to hpmexam.com and you can find information that's specific to the PMP exam. You can also go on down to praisium, P-R-A-I-Z-I-O-N.com and find out when our next series of courses are. It's your buddy Phil. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends, and I'll see you in another episode. You take care and bye for now.